If you're like me, you take lots of snapshots when you visit a beautiful place like this, but which one will make a good painting? In the first of this two-part lesson, I'm going to show you how to select an interesting composition, crop it on the computer to fit the canvas, and transfer that image onto the canvas. In part two, I'll paint that image in oils. The day is pretty much getting away from me, but in order to get a jump on tomorrow, we're going to prepare the canvas. I'm gonna show you my, my trick for doing this that will speed things up tomorrow. Okay, I have just a little bit of water here. We're gonna make a thin glaze of acrylic. I'm doing an oil painting tomorrow, but we're going to do our um, our little glaze on our canvas with some burnt sienna. Yep. Burnt sienna, smidge of orange to warm it up. And because of the subject matter, I just feel like it needs a smidge of alizarin crimson, yes. Okay. I'm gonna water it down, mix these together, make it nice and watery. In fact, I probably made way too much. I might do a few canvases while I have a, have this made. Is, I think, especially important to get a nice warm base underneath. It gives a sense of the earth, especially the earth here in Georgia, this red clay. Um, but it, it lets a little bit of that earth um, color show through. And it may not be something that you are, that you can really perceive with the eye, but it's there. And this will give a, uh, a lot more realism to your painting. When you're putting your colors on there. Okay, so much better than just a, a white canvas. See you tomorrow. Uh, I think one of the most important things you can do is set up your reference material prior to starting your painting. So I thought I would show you some of the, the photos that I was considering, and these are all of the same area. So here's a photo with a couple of people right here. Uh, I do like this photo. I may use this at some point. Uh, I went ahead, do you see the crop mark? That is a, um, a proportional crop mark that um, is 16 by 20. So that's one way you can use Photoshop or whatever photo editing tool you have to crop the photo the size that you're going to be painting. And uh, that's gonna help tremendously before you go to the easel. So this is one of the photos I was considering. 
Uh, here's another one, and in fact, this is the one that I did end up uh, going ahead and cropping. Now, this color, eh, there are some things that we're going to do differently in the painting. Um, for one thing, at the gardens, they put this kind of weird, hazy green stuff, I guess it's supposed to be bluish, in the water, and I'm just not crazy about that. Uh, but you can see now that instead of having this big, long um, painting, I'm now in the 16-20, uh, 3 by 4 aspect ratio on that. And what's this one? This is what I originally chose. I was really uh, focusing in a lot more. That's this photo, um, and I've, I've even decided against that. You know, I could, you know, move that over, uh, take that limb out. You have to look at the, the full composition, and this is a distraction. So it either has to be fully incorporated into the the painting or it has to be taken out of the painting. Uh, you have the artistic license to do whatever you need to do in order to make a successful composition. So the way I have solved it instead of moving this over and totally taking that out, um, I've solved it simply by pulling back and getting the whole tree in there. In fact, I like these ferns on it. So, and I like the color there of the Japanese maple, that the purples and reds in that, I think will balance all the greens nicely, and the purple irises that are right here, and that Japanese maple off in the distance there. So I think with this composition, we've got a better balance of, um, of the reds and the greens and I'll be, you know, I've got this nice dark um, sculptural tree in here that has a lot of interest to it. Uh, I have a, a, a concrete sculpture, I guess that's like a bird feeder right there and, uh, you know, several big rocks in here. Anyway, I just think overall this is going to be an interesting composition. I also have the willows coming down into the, uh, the design. And I also like the balance of light uh, coming through it, okay? With this and then the reflection of the light and then coming here, we've got a nice um, composition going here with uh, lights and darks. So that's the winner and as you can see I had already cropped it. Don't like the color as much in this one so I'm going to change that and um, and pump up the color. This color obviously is, is not even near being what it should be. Uh, overall it needs to be pumped up, but then I can tell that the yellow was low. It was, it was way too blue looking. So I'm going to bring some uh, uh, pump up the yellow in that. Okay, I've resized it down by down to 8 by 10 in order to print it on a normal eight and a half by 11 sheet of photographic paper. Now another trick I like to do to make sure that I've got a uh, strong composition is I like to reduce it in size. If you can reduce it down to like, gosh, you know, one inch, in this case, like one by one and a half inches, 
and it's still an interesting composition, then you're on to something, okay? If it totally washes out, uh, it may not be a really strong composition, unless you're just wanting something to look like that. There are no hard and fast rules. So, uh, this is what I am going to print and we'll move on to painting. Okay, it's the next day and I got three canvases primed out of that slurry. And I'm going to use this one. Now I'm going to show you an easy begin beginner method for laying out a composition when you know that you have your reference material that is the same size as what you want to transfer it to. So we did that original work in Photoshop making sure that they are proportional. Uh, this is a, a great way for you to easily put the items here where they need to go here because I know it can be frustrating when you're a beginner but I do not want you to trace. So this starts to help you um, make connections um, and, and to look at things spatially. So it's a little cheat, but I think one that, that really comes in handy. Now, if you've ever uh, looked at the book Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain, some of these methods are in there. And it's a great way, especially for people who think, oh gosh, I can never learn how to draw. Um, there's a few methods that absolutely you can learn how to draw. And this is one of those methods that makes it kind of easy. What I'm doing is I'm taking the reference photo and I'm dividing it in half, okay? It's eight inches. So I've divided it in half and here's the 10 inch side. I'm gonna divide it in half. Now, as you get better, that may be plenty. As you get more confident. Now, eventually, when you're like me, I can just look at this and start sketching. But if it's a really large image, sometimes I still do this. Okay, so to make it even easier, I'm going to divide each quadrant again. Okay, so two and a half inches. Two and a half, two and a half. This is great because it really simplifies what you're doing and you can take some stress off. Now, my ruler is two inches, um, which is exactly what I need to divide this quadrant, which is one thing I love about these rulers. So, I'm gonna divide here again and then Divide the other side. Okay, so this is divided into 16 rectangles. Okay, I hope you can see that. It's kind of hard to see on this. Um, now, I'm going to make 16 rectangles on here. But on here, I'm going to use vine charcoal. 
fine charcoal is uh, very fragile. Uh, the good thing about it is it, can, it makes marks, but then you can brush off all the mark, uh, virtually all the mark. And uh, so it won't interfere with your painting. Okay, so here, our canvas is exactly double in size of what our reference photo is, which makes it easy. So I'm going to make a mark at 10 and 10, okay? So I'm doing the same thing over again. Now, to speed up the process, I would normally just go ahead and make all my marks. So um, I'll do that. Anyway, if you have a hard time with rulers, you, you divide it in half and divide it in half again. Um, I'm just going to make a mark every five inches. Now, these are rectangles, not squares. So, on the other dimension, it is going to be every four inches. So here are our lines, and I'm going to show you how easy it is to pretty much brush those off. Okay, just take a dry brush. And lighten those up. Okay, you want to lighten it up enough that it's not going to mix with your paint and make your paint uh, gray. Now you could do this project in acrylic or oils. I'm going to be using oil. See how light the lines are? Still plenty visible, but it won't interfere with my paint. Now I was going to take you over to the canvas and start drawing everything in. The lighting is pretty good here. I think I'll just show you right here what I'm going to do. Let me get the camera resituated a little bit. Okay, so this is a little bit awkward for me, but I hope that you can see well. I've got my, my reference uh, picture. You can start in the corner, you know, anywhere you want. And, um, and, and look at each individual rectangle. So that's how you're able to break it down and it's not so overwhelming in your mind. All you're going to do is draw each rectangle. For instance, here, we'll actually start right there. That comes in here. 
okay and then I'm looking over here it comes a little bit above the corner here it's kind of a knob okay Let me see that. Pull that back down. Okay. So that's the most important feature of that rectangle. Okay. Nailed it. Okay. Um, normally I wouldn't do this stuff. This is all foreground. So, uh, you know, normally you wouldn't do uh, things in your foreground first. But just to show you how you divide up and, and look at these quadrants, you know, here's that. Um, this right here, an odd shaped bush. It goes and it just touches that edge actually a little bit above halfway. So see, I caught myself, I'm drawing that incorrectly. Uh, it's above the halfway mark, that's where it hits. Now the point for doing this is to start looking at the relationships between these shapes, the relationships they have with each other that's when you can start drawing anything. People like to ask me, oh, well, what can I draw? Well, I can draw anything. Anything I can see, I can draw. Frankly, anything I can think of. Doesn't have to be something I can see. I can just make it up in my mind. But this will start to give you some confidence um, that you can draw anything. It's just a matter of simplifying uh, what you're seeing so it doesn't feel so overwhelming. Okay. Uh, in that, that far background, that's just going to become um, yeah, a lot of color. Uh, we're not going to get real detailed with that. We're just going to have some interesting color in there. Okay, so I'm going to come over to this quadrant. Let me move the camera a little bit. Okay, so I can see that it comes through that corner and down into the next quadrant. And then back up. And then the tree comes down. Let's see here. It's kind of hard to see it right there. Comes down right through here. Now here I'm looking at this. It is um, not quite halfway. Okay, so I'm going to move over. Here's half. Move over a smidge. Okay, that makes sense. Um, here, it goes right past the line. So I start right here, down to okay, down two rectangles. Uh, it's pretty much in the middle right here. Okay, then we're just going to connect to those. You don't want a real straight line. It's organic. Okay, and then I see here, I'm trying to make sure I'm still in the 
the camera's got it. Okay, down here, and it comes down here. And we've got a root that comes off. Okay, I know this shows in that quadrant just a little bit. When it goes into there a little bit, that corner is the rock. Okay, you're going to have ferns that come up here. Now, in this quadrant, it's about halfway is where those lilies start. And that right there, it goes all the way over. To the next quadrant, or not quadrant, the next uh, rectangle. More than four here, 16. Okay. Okay, now this is pretty close here. I'm looking at all my relationships here, okay? So, we're down in the corner. The top of that comes pretty close to the edge here. A little nub on top. I can get more detailed on that later. I think I'm going to move it down a smidge. Okay, that's what this is great about using vine charcoal. You just rub it away if you need to. That's why we're sketching this in first. It's okay to uh, change things. That's what this is all about. I'm just going to kind of put the rocks in here, an idea of where those are in the layout. Okay. So the whole reason for doing this is to start to look at the relationship of these shapes. Okay? And soon, as you do this more and more, you're not going to have to do this step where you do the, the grid and all of that. Your confidence will build up and you'll just be able to uh, look at the relationships and sketch. Mm, this is just all open uh, water reflections down here. It looks like a bunch of stuff, but just reflections. Um, over here, let me see, right above the line, we've got rock. 
above this line. That is a red maple. This one. We would have to decide. I don't know if I'm going to put these little bitty people in here or not. But there are a couple little bitty people. That little, <laughs> little bitty persons. <laughs> Peeps. How about that? A peep there and a peep there. Okay. Uh, that's really all we need to start the painting. We've got our main elements in. Okay. And now again, I'm going to brush that off. And I've got just enough. Okay, so my next step will be the underpainting. And uh, I'll be at my easel. Thanks so much for joining me for this lesson. I hope you really got something out of it. You could help me to continue to give you free content by clicking that like button below and hitting the subscribe button so Arts Express will be easy to find in your subscription list. Also comment. I'd love to start a conversation. Have a great day. Bye.